everyone. I'm Ruth Leitner and welcome back to this version of Children's Moments with Mount Gilead. Well, the last time I finished telling you about all the pictures that we have over our sanctuary and about the founders of the church that church is that became the United Methodist Church. And now I'd like to tell you a little bit about how Mount Gilead Church got started way back in the year 1830, which really isn't that far from the time that the men that we were talking about were traveling around and starting new churches. 1830, there was a group of people that started meeting together in Shermansdale. Um, really just down the road and across Route 34. Most of you know that that's the big street that um, goes through Shermansdale. And they met in the home of a family with the last name of Lackey. Well, after a while, more people got together and came to the meetings and there were too many people to meet in the house. So they moved the meetings into the schoolhouse, which was at the corner of, Mount, of uh, Windy Hill Road and Route 34. That schoolhouse isn't there any longer. But they started meeting in the schoolhouse and they were there all the way until the year of 1870. That's when um, two people named uh, John and Elizabeth Squeeger, they donated the land that we now have for our church and our cemetery. And just like the men that we talked about, like uh, Francis Asbury and William McKendry, the preachers traveled around to several different churches. And in the early days, there were many different pastors that came to the congregation, first the ones that were meeting, and then even when the church was built, there were many different preachers that came to the church. Well, this church built in 1870 was just after the Civil War. And as I said, 1870 is the date that we're using to celebrate our 150th anniversary because that was when the church was actually built. Now we do have a picture of the very first church. Actually, this is still part of Mount Gilead, but this was all that we had in the very beginning. The very first church was this small church and it's now kind of the middle of our sanctuary. Well, we were sharing a pastor with two other churches, the New Bloomfield Methodist Church and the Walnut Grove Church. Now, when we had our 125th anniversary, the folks at Mount Gilead put together a booklet and they shared stories with lots of the church families and they recorded memories of families and their grandparents and some even great grandparents that came to Mount Gilead. There were stories of people walking to church or riding horses to church. This was before any cars were available. There's a story about a soldier that fought in the Civil War for the South. But then he moved to Perry County and he married a woman and he became a northerner and he attended Mount Gilead. He is buried in our church cemetery. We also have some stories about the pot-bellied stove that was in the middle of the church and they had to keep the fire going with wood so that the people in the church wouldn't freeze. Some of the boys got that job to get the kindling and to keep that fire going. Well, over the years, the church kept growing, so more parts were added to the building. A furnace was put in so that they didn't have to use that stove anymore. And eventually, in the 1960s, a basement was dug underneath the church building. Now, for those of you that have attended Mount Gilead, that's where we now have our Sunday school classes. That part of the church wasn't even here in the beginning. 
Well, remember how we learned about Philip Otterbein and Jacob Albright? They started the German churches and they had different names. One was called the Evangelic, oh, I'm sorry, the um, United Church of the Brethren and the United Evangelical Church. Well, in the 18, or, I'm sorry, the 1960s and some of the grandparents were alive then, um, those churches got together and they were called the Evangelical United Brethren Churches. That's a mouthful. A lot of people called them the EUB churches. Well, they got together with the Methodist Episcopal churches in 1968, and they became known as the United Methodist Church. And at that time, there were two EUB churches in Shermansdale. And some of you may have, have gone past these churches, Young's Church, and the Shermansdale Church, which is just down the street from Mount Gilead, that's why we have so many different churches now that are United Methodist churches, but they were different churches in the beginning. So they probably used some German um, language in the very early parts, and Mount Gilead was using English. But once they all became the United Methodist Church, everyone's sharing the Book of Discipline, and we're all speaking the same language. So we shared a pastor with those two churches, Young's Church and Shermansdale and Mount Gilead, all the way up until 1992. And that's when our parsonage was born. That's the house where Pastor Dennis and Jean live now. And at that point, Mount Gilead was able to have one pastor just to serve Mount Gilead Church. Now, Young's and Shermansdale still do share a pastor between those two churches. But we have lots of wonderful stories about what people remember about growing up at Mount Gilead and about all the fun things that they've done at Mount Gilead over the years. That's the best part of our anniversary celebration, sharing the stories, sharing the history. And that made me think about a verse from Hebrews. Now this is a very long verse, but I'll explain it a little bit in a minute. This is from Hebrews 12, verses 1 and part of 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Well, all of those people that Paul was talking about when he was talking about, uh, when he was writing and talking to the Hebrews, those were stories from the Bible that pointed to people who had great faith in God. And we know that that didn't end. The apostles continued to share stories about Jesus and people that started Mount Gilead have shared stories about Jesus. So, if you get a chance, you should ask your parents, maybe your grandparents, about how did they learn about Jesus? Because there were important people in their lives that taught them about Jesus. They might even have some good stories about Mount Gilead when they first came here, how they came here. Um, it would be fun to know how that got started because they passed that down to you as you can come to Mount Gilead and learn about Jesus. So I hope you have fun finding out a little bit more about how your family came here, and we will pray. Dear Lord, thank you for our church family. There have been lots of things that have happened at Mount Gilead and other churches over the years. We thank you for always being with your people and giving us teachers and pastors and other believers, and a place to gather and get to know each other. But most of all, we thank you for our chance to learn more about you, God, and how we can live in a way that is pleasing to you and to help others get to know about you too. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for joining us.